majestic in its dark grandeur, Agua. The volcano of water rears its menacing peak over the sleeping ruins of the ancient city of Antigua, one time capital of Guatemala, largest of the five republics in Central America. Agua is one of several volcanoes, now slumbering, which time and again have laid in ruins. Guatemalan cities founded in the dim past by the Toltecs. For over 200 years, Antigua was the capital of Guatemala and the seat of one of the highest types of civilization in the Western world. The cruelty of nature and of foreign invaders have destroyed Guatemala's ancient culture. The majority of her citizens, who are pure-blooded Indians, live in a state closely bordering on semi-barbarism. Throughout the country, one finds villages composed mainly of one-story houses, walled with rocks and thatched with straw. The more palatial of these are crowned with a large earthenware pot to keep out the tropical rains. A typical residence will house grandma, grandpa, a couple of their married children, their children, a dozen chickens and a dog or two. The elders of the settlements are treated with great respect, something lacking in our more, should we say, cultured countries. In some respects, the Guatemalan Indians are far advanced. For instance, the barber trims one's home. While, as for the ladies, they have a style of hairdressing that, well, it may yet be the rage with us. and hat in one, style plus economy. The Guatemalan women are the busy bees of the family, doing all the cooking and most of the other work essential to life. They are adept at making tortillas, that ancient ancestor of our own modern flapjack. This girl, well, she sure would collect crowds in front of a restaurant window. It looks here as if Mama and the kiddies are on an outing at the beach, but that isn't so. They're really hard at work catching fish to go with those tortillas. They build a breakwater of grass and weeds and gradually bring the ends together. The silly little fish, second cousins to sardines, are caught in the resulting pools and will be served for dinner. That is, if there's anything left of them after they're fried. The men go duck hunting occasionally, when a bit tired of tortillas and fish. Just try this method of catching ducks sometimes. First, locate your ducks. And then give chase in a duck out canoe, throwing rocks at your prospective dinner every once in a while. If you tire out the ducks before collapsing yourself, well, just sock one with a rock and call it a day. Some sport, eh what? In their spare moments, it might be said while resting, the ladies of the Guatemalan Indian households convert the wool from sheep, which they raise, into wool and thread, and then into cloth. Though they have no spinning wheels, they're very adept into spinning the wool into thread with a stick for a spindle and a bit of broken gourd. You might try this yourself sometime when you get tired of listening to the radio. The finished thread is dyed on racks and rolled into skeins prior to being woven into cloth for clothing or into rugs and blankets, which are eventually bartered in the nearby marketplace. With the crudest of looms, the girls fashion this material. This girl is very busy with both hands and mouth. She's chewing chicle the base of our own more modern chewing gum. It sure sounds good, doesn't it? The weaver sits in a loop of the crude loom to hold the affair taut 
and busily works away on a blanket. And here's the result of her work. It took a long time to make it, but it's guaranteed pure wool, a yard wide, and it'll last a lifetime. Though mules are used in transporting tobacco and coffee in bulk, the most common pack animal in Guatemala is the native Indian himself. Yes, indeed, father does work at times, and here he is, several of him, on the way to market, with a load of pottery, blankets, cloth, and, well, what have you. The foundation for the pack is the cacast, resembling a music cabinet, which is carried on the back with the aid of a head strap. The average load is about 200 pounds for the men. Oh yes, the women carry packs too, though their packs are just a bit lighter, as well they generally have a baby to take along with theirs. Even the boys are trained at an early age to become human beasts of burden. Every community has its marketplace. And here, the caravan of two-legged mules finally arrives to trade its wares for necessity as in luxury. The natives are unable to produce at home. Here, all is commotion, with fruit vendors calling their wares, customers haggling over goods with merchants, acquaintances renewing old friendships and making new ones. It's just a short stroll from the hum and the buzz of the busy market to the big public drinking fountain in the plazas. The women love to gossip here while filling their huge jars with water, and few of those big jars are ever broken, but many a reputation is badly damaged when the girls get their busy tongues to wag. Every day is Monday at the big municipal baths where the women bring their dirty linen. You'd think that the girls would look mighty neat with all this washing, but, well, take a look for yourself. You know it's against the rules, but when the custodian of the bath isn't looking, the girls take a shower occasionally, very occasionally. Though the majority of the native Guatemalan Indians, composing about four-fifths of the country's population, are devout Catholics, their great delight on festive occasions in the cities is the indulgence in rites and practices undoubtedly descended from their pagan ancestors, the Taltecs. Among these is the carnival dance, solemnly performed in elaborate costume to the booming beat of the native instrument, the marimba. Even though these ceremonies are old as history, they have a definite place in the life of these people in the pre lenten celebration. Fantastic figures representing different animals. As the lasso descends over the antlers of the deer, it signifies the capture of the last meat before the 40 days observance. But at work, or at play, there looms in the background of the life of these peaceful people, the age-old menace of Agua and her sister Volcano, which have so ruthlessly played their part in retarding the development of what.